Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. So this is probably the most popular requested one since the previous time I did it. And that is adding smooth local motion to Unreal Engine 5.1. Um, the difference between this and the old version is the enhanced input system. And a couple of little settings here and there. But what I want to point out is I do have a blog post that I've wrote up covering the entire process for setting this up in excruciating detail. So if you prefer to look through this and set it up that way, then I recommend it. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the exact same content on video and we're going to set this up so by the end of it you have the ability to run around your scene, jump, sprint and then pick up your weapons. Um, don't rush through this, you don't have to do, it's not just the blueprint section that you have to do, there's a lot of back end stuff that we've got to cover as well such as custom collisions and going into the grab component. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by opening up Unreal Engine. I'm going to use 5.1 because that is the first version of the Unreal Engine that uses Enhanced Input System for OpenXR. So we'll use this and then the idea is that this will just transfer through every other version that comes from Unreal. So once we've got this, we want to do a virtual reality template. I've already got a folder and I'm going to call this YouTube Smooth Locomotion. And it's telling me it's too long, so let's call this YouTube Smooth. Can't do local, smooth local motion because I've already got a file like that. So let's hit create. That's going to open up the engine. While that's going on, uh, I do have the Oculus Quest connected to the PC already with the Oculus Home Environment and Oculus Desktop. And a big shout out to Patreons who made this possible for me to put the time in to write the blog post, doing this. And of course, Carissa over on the Discord who pretty much figured out most of the code for this. Um, and let me make tutorials on it, which is awesome. So now that we have the engine open, what we want to do is go to our VR template. We're going to go to inputs folder and we want to set up some new inputs. Before we can create our input mapping contexts, we need to create our input actions. And because we're doing a new movement system, we need to add our thumbsticks an A button for jumping and setting up sprint. Uh, we could do snap turn, but we also we already have a input action turn. So we're going to leave that as it is and then go from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, input actions, create input action, IA underscore jump. We're gonna do input action, IA underscore sprint. Input action, IA underscore move forward. Move forward. And then we're gonna have a new input action Action underscore move horizontal. Excellent. So for this sprint and jump, we don't actually have to touch anything because if we open one of these up, we'll be able to see that they're actually using a value type of bool. So that's basically on or off, which is what we want. However, by default, we want to change the move forward and move horizontal. So they default to digital bool, but we want these to be access 1D. What that means is the thumbstick by default is at a location of zero. And then if you push it to the left, it would be negative one. Right, it would be one. And we're going to use that value to control our movement where we go. So we just need to change that axis value. Do the same thing for move horizontal. Axis 1D float. Hit save and then file save all. We can close them those windows down and go back to input. I'm trying to get through this as fast as possible because there's a lot to cover. But what we want to do is we want to duplicate our default input mapping context. And then we're going to duplicate this and call this smooth locomotion. The reason we're duplicating this is so we don't have to set up as many inputs. So open this up and you'll see here on the drop down we have a mappings list. So this list contains all of the inputs for our buttons or input actions. So we can add them here. And um, we have a move input. We can delete this. I will delete this for this example, but what this allows you to do is control teleportation. So if you want smooth locomotion and to be able to teleport with the right thumbstick, we would keep this in. Actually, I might do that. We'll just keep that input action in there. And then we're gonna add our new one. So you can see we've got turn, grab left, grab right, toggle, and these all have their inputs already included for us. So we're gonna do a new one and we'll search for jump. Then we'll do another one. We can only do one of these at the time, so we'll do sprint. Uh, move forward. 
and then move horizontal. So now what you want to do is go through and set up all your inputs as there would be in your project. And you can do that by clicking the plus next to any of them. So if you click plus, it'll allow you to add multiple in there. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back once I've done those because it'll just take up too long. So I've gone through and added all the new input mappings to our project. But what we want to do here is actually change our input action turn. So by default, our snap turn is on our left thumbstick, but that's going to be where our movement controls are. So if we move left or right, it's going to try and rotate us while we're moving. So what you want to do is you want to remap this input action section to the right thumbstick. So basically change all of these so it says R instead of the left. So once I do that, I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and set up all my inputs. Uh, I recommend pausing this right here and then going through and filling those out as you do it. Um, if you want the actual images, just check out the blog page. There's a full screenshot there of what they are. But for this, we can actually close this input mapping context now. And um, what we want to do is before going on, we want to make sure our input mapping context is inside of our PMI. So our player mappable input. We're going to open this up and go to player mappable. And in here, we've got a context drop down. We want to make sure our smooth local motion is set here. If we don't do this, we'll have no inputs at all because our OpenXR system won't know they exist. So smooth locomotion, just like this, and then we can hit save. And that's literally it. Our inputs are all sorted. So what we can do now is actually go to our blueprints. So I'm gonna open this VR pawn up, which we already have. And then I'm going to go to class settings. And what we wanna do is we wanna change our parent class to a character. If you keep an eye on the left panel here, you'll see that we've got our VR pawn but there's nothing down here. What we're gonna do is when we select character and we search for specifically character, we don't want ArcViz, we want the character itself. You'll see that it adds a capsule component for us and a character movement. Uh, this character movement contains a whole bunch of stats and information that we can change for our player. So it gives you a lot more options and control over it. It also means we don't have to set a whole bunch of stuff up. So what we need to do now is add a component to our list and unfortunately this will destroy our hierarchy so we will have to fix it but we're going to search for scene and under utilities it says scene and this is a scene component we're going to use this and we're going to rename this to vr character origin and we'll need this as a reference and now we can select everything in our hierarchy apart from our arrow mesh and the actual vr character origin itself so with everything that's selected blue, we're going to drag those onto the VR character origin. And you see that it's broke our hierarchy. So for first thing that we set up, we'll set up the HMD back onto the, the camera. Hand left will go to our motion controller left. Hand right will go to motion controller right. Our widget interaction left will go to motion controller left aim. And widget interaction right will go to motion controller right aim. Then the last thing is teleport trace and agar system. That kind of just hangs out by itself and it can be all good. So we can collapse these down and we'll see what the list actually looks like. We'll do compile just to make sure it's all sorted and it unders our list. So save all at this point. And now we can actually take a look at the next steps. And that's gonna be setting up our position for our VR character origin and then inputs. So in our VR origin, You'll see that our camera is at the center of our capsule. This is essentially our player's body and the floor is going to be down here. The way VR works is it tracks from the floor up to get your actual real world height. So what we need to do is move this by negative 90 on the Z axis. So our VR character origin is at the floor level. This way, when we put the headset on, we'll be at the correct height. If we left this up, it will be our correct height plus the value difference between the bottom here, which is 90 units. So minus 90, and then we can go back to our event graph. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change how our input mapping context works. So by default, our player defaults back to the input mapping context underscore default, whereas we wanna change this to our smooth local motion. So we've got a section set up already here, so we don't have to do much. We just need to change our mapping context to smooth local motion. And this will rebind and redo all of our inputs. And because we left them the same, these will already work, same as our turn. 
we can hit compile and everything works as it is. Before moving ahead, I want to shout out that if you're doing desktop development for VR, what you want to do is in here, you will want to add a section or a node called enable HMD and set this to true if you're doing desktop development. That way, once you build the EXE, it will actually work with the movement system or it will just load in general. So we've got that. And just to test that our inputs work, we're actually going to create a new input action underscore uh, move forward. We want the ones with a little arrow. That's our movement input. And we're going to do this as just a debug. So from triggered, we're going to do a print string. We'll be deleting this in a second. And now if we go to VR preview, so we can load up Unreal or load up our template project. Once the frame rate comes back, we can see that our hands are spawning on the floor and we can't actually do anything. So the reason for that is they're down there. And that is because I forgot to change the description of our inputs. So this seems to be a bug and it's already crashed my Unreal. So let's boot this back up. So now that's back up, what we want to do is go to our VR template, inputs. And what I forgot to change was in Smooth Locomotion, we have this description here at the bottom of the screen. This can't be the same as another template. So because we duplicated our input mapping, then it has the same description. So what we want to do is VR Smooth Locomotion. Hit save. And then we can jump in. Hopefully this one boots up straight away. And then we've got our hands. And if I press forward on the thumbstick, we can see our hello debug line is firing. So we know our custom inputs are in there. Um, I'm quite tall. I'm not too sure whether it's my room scale leg like, off or I haven't changed the position of the Z axis when it crashed. So let's take a look. So let's open up our blueprint player. Um, we got the stuff that's at the bottom, which is all good. And what it probably is, is that our player start is clipping through the floor. With smooth local motion, this needs to be on the top. So we can just drag this up and then hit end on the keyboard. And that'll snap us right back down to the floor. And now we can hop back over to our player. So in our event graph, what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that input and we're gonna create a custom event. We could have this fire from an event tick, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this begin or play and use a timer. The reason for that is if you're not using the smooth locomotion system or anything like that, you'll be able to disable it. So if you're using Quest, you can have some performance gain from that. So first thing we do is set it to initialize position. So we're gonna have initialize capsule position custom event, hit enter, and then we're gonna drag off this into set timer by event. This timer is gonna update on every 0.2 seconds. And we're gonna have this looping. And then we're going to create another custom event from this delegate. And we're going to call this update capsule height. And from our set timer event, we want a reference to our capsule. So we're going to do drag in our capsule, then search for half height. So get capsule half height. And we're going to right click and promote this to a variable and plug this into our set timer event. So we've got this. And now we can set up our capsule height. So drag off the executable for custom event, but set capsule size, and you'll see it gives a brackets capsule component. We want to place that into our event graph. And for our in radius, we want to get a scaled capsule, scaled capsule radius. Plug that in like so. And now we need to set up our half height. And to set up our in half height, we want to drag in a variable so we're going to drag in the capsule half height variable that we already created so capsule half height plug that into there like so we're going to drag off the executable and we're going to do add relative location and we want this to be our vr character origin so we're going to split our delta location pin and from our capsule half height we're going to drag off and do a subtract plug that into our delta z and now we need to set up our math for this part so what we're going to do is we're going to right click get device orientation and position, input head mount display, get orientation and position. We're gonna split our device position pin and then we're gonna actually divide, so drag off slash divide by two. So it takes us, uh, it takes our device position height and then half sat down to our capsule radius, so our half height. And then we're gonna add 
five. So this value here is how tall the capsule is above the player's head. So if you want to make the capsule really tall, player will stay the same size, but the capsule will be larger to stop them from walking on things. Then you can increase this value. So we have that like so. And then we want to take this and we want to get our capsule half height again. This time we're going to set it, plug that in, and we're going to set this from our plus, just to make sure I've got the right one. So what are we doing here? So when we start, we get our initialized capsule position. This will fire on begin play, which we could actually do this now. So at the end of it, we do initialize capsule position. What that does is fires our custom event, which starts our timer. But before that, we get a reference to our original capsule height, which is set. And then we set our capsule every 0.02 seconds on a loop to the actual half height capsule. And then we get the the orientation of position, we divide that by half. We add a bit so it adds onto the top of our noggin where we subtract it. And what that does is it moves our VR character origin to our capsule component and they, they align. And then we set our capsule half height again. So this bit is basically on a little loop that kind of updates and sets. So the next, next thing to do with this section is to actually comment our code. So select our code and then do C. I'm going to call this initialize. We're going to have initialize our capsule position. Then we don't drag in a reference. We select everything here. We do C, update our capsule height position. And then we'll do this initialize from begin play every 0.02 seconds. So that is our first section done. What we're going to do now is set up our room scale. So our capsule will move forward, left and right, or forward, back, left and right with our camera. So it'll kind of update the position for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a new custom event and name this update capsule position. And we're going to drag off this and do add actor world offset. And from this pin, if we do it both at the same time, we're going to drag off and then do add world offset for our VR origin. So VR character origin. And we want to split our delta pin. What we want to do now is get a reference to our camera and our capsule component by dragging those in. And we're going to get world location. So we're getting the location of them in the world. And then we're going to subtract them from each other on the X and Y. So what that does is moves them together and then they'll line up with each other. So I'm gonna do a subtract from that pin, but I'm gonna disconnect it. We're gonna right click on one of the pins from our subtraction. I'm gonna do convert to vector. And we're then gonna split the pins for each one, even the output. And then we're gonna split the pins for our get world location as well, both of those. So you want something that looks like this. Our X and Y is gonna plug in like so. And then the same thing for our X and Y of our get world locations. From there, we're going to right click and search for negate. And we want negate vector. We're going to split our pin for A and plug that into our, yeah, X and Y, just to double check it. And then our negate vector can plug into our delta location. I'm also going to make sure that our add actor world offset is on teleport and then add world offset is sweep. So what's happening here is once our custom event fires, we're getting our camera and capsule positions and we're basically smashing those together so they work in the same position. So if our camera moves, our capsule updates with it and it follows along. And we're doing that by using these add world, uh, add actor world offsets and add world offset. And then we negate those values together to do the delta location. Um, we're not actually firing the update capsule position at this point. What I prefer to do is, after playing around with this, is set it so when we move our thumbsticks, only then our capsule position updates. What that allows you to do is, if you walk up to something and the player stops, in the real world, so in the physical space, you can still move around, the capsule will stay where it is, and then you can look over tables, or you can kind of walk through them to get a better result. If you leave it as it is, when the player leans forward to look over something, they'd naturally be pushed away from it. So this just allows a little bit more control over that. So now we can actually comment our code. We'll just see update capsule scale slash capsule position. Hit enter. So now we should be left with these two sections of code. This one fires on begin play and then updates 
by the timer. And then this fires nowhere, it's not doing anything just yet. And we'll be doing that next. So now we can actually set up our movement controls. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna do right click, input action, underscore, and we'll do move. So move forward and then input action, underscore, move horizontal. We're gonna do these both at the same time because they're pretty much similar code. There's just a couple of things we have to change. And from here, I'm gonna use the triggered. So if you don't know about the enhanced input system, triggered fires every, while the thumbstick's pushed. So it's a rapid execute. And then started only happens once when you push the button for the first time. And then completed is when it ends. We're actually gonna use the triggered. So while the thumbstick's being pushed forward, then we update our position. And we're gonna do that by triggering our update capsule position. So update capsule position. Do that for both and then we're going to add movement input so add movement input have this for both as well and the way i prefer to set this up is by using the camera so if we look in a direction that is our forward direction and um, you can have it so it's set up to the motion controller it's just a case of swapping out the position uh, the variables but in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to use camera drag in this reference twice and from camera we want the get forward vector and then we want to, from the bottom one, we want to get right vector. And we're doing that because the bottom section of our enhanced, enhanced input is our horizontal. So move left and right. And then we can plug that into our world direction. And then for the top, we're moving forward. So we use the forward vector. From there, it's a case of setting up our scale values. So action value to scale. And we do the same thing for the bottom one. So what this does is it takes our input action value from our thumbstick so zero to one or negative to one and then it actually applies a scale value to this for our right vector so this is what controls our movement going forward if you want to increase the player speed you could pro you can actually add a multiply in here or simply go to character movement and then there is a max walk speed you can change the sentence in there but as you do a bit less code so now we can actually comment this section we're going to do this move player forward back left and right. And we'll do this when thumb stick is push. Excellent. So now our movement's in there, what we can do is we can actually jump in and test this. And we can see that by moving the left controller, we move around, which is awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the snap rotation. This is actually super simple because we haven't added any new inputs. In the blog, I do, but in this case, we're just reusing the one that already exists which is input action turn. What we wanna do is modify this snap turn function that already exists for us. So we're gonna open this up and all we need to do is actually disconnect this last portion here. You can delete it if you want to. And that's all we have to do there. So we hit compile and save. So now if we pop the headset on and we have both controllers connected up, we can actually use the left controller to move around and then the right thumbstick to move. And that's the next thing. So the right thumbstick does not actually move us right now. If we don't snap rotate. So I don't forget, what we want to do is select a VR pawn. And on the right here, there is a setting called use controller rotation yaw. We want to deselect this. Then we can jump back in and test it. And now we should be able to move around with the left controller. And now we can actually snap turn and rotate on the spot as we walk around. Which is awesome. So now to set up sprint and jump. So back in the event graph, we need a empty section. We're gonna right click and do input action underscore jump because it is super simple. And from started, we're gonna drag off and search for jump. And because we're using a character movement, this function already exists for us. So we can select that, comment this section and call it jump. And we can set up our sprinting here. So we're gonna right click, input action underscore sprint. And for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a reference to our character movement. Drag this in and search for max walk speed. And we wanna do set max walk speed. So by default, our max walk speed is set to 600. So we're gonna set this to 600. What we could do is we could drag off this and do get max walk speed. But if you do that, when we change it, it'll change that variable. So you wanna do this manually. So unstarted. And we're doing unstarted, so when the button's clicked once, it'll update it. We don't need to update this sprint speed on tick. Then we duplicate this set variable. And then 
from completed and plug the target into self. So now our speeds match. So if we click the button, nothing's gonna happen relative to our player speed. So what we wanna do is when we press start or we click our thumbstick button in and start at the input, we're gonna change this to something obscure like 2000. I recommend about a thousand ideally, but just for this example, we're gonna do that and then we'll actually comment this and call it sprint speed. Wow. Save and test. So the VR template is quite a small level by default, but you see we're moving around and if we try running through the door by clicking the thumbstick, we speed up quite a bit. So click the thumbstick, we can run around. So that's all working. So our code for our player actually looks like this, which is not actually a lot. It looks more complex than it is. But if we test our project now, you might think that we're done. So if we jump in, we can move around, we can play in our scene, we can jump, we can sprint, but we can't actually pick up weapons. So we can pick up weapons, but you'll see if they overlap our player collider, it moves us around the map. So we need to set up some custom collisions to get this to work. And when we let go, they just explode into nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up a custom collision channel for our actors. And we do that by going to file or edit and then project settings. In here is a section called collision. What we wanna do is we wanna add an object channel and then we're also gonna add a preset. So our object channel is gonna be a new channel. We're gonna call this VR interactable. And then default response channel is gonna be block. And now at the bottom here, we can do a new preset. And we're also gonna call this VR interactable. Collision type is gonna be collision enabled query and physics. And our object type is gonna be VR interactable. And we can call this for the description, allow player to grab actors. So we hit accept. Jump back to our template. And we wanna make sure in our player, our capsule component has the collision channel set to custom, which allows us to actually control our collision responses. And what we're gonna do is we'll say VR interactable is set to ignore. So it means if our player walks over an object that has the VR interactable collision channel, we won't kick it around and it won't push us around the map. So with that done, we wanna change our grabbable actors. In this case, we've got two different versions. We've got a pistol and a cube. We're gonna open up the, we'll do the pistol first. We're gonna select our skeletal mesh gun. And in here, we wanna go down to our collision and we wanna change collision preset to VR interactable. Hit compile. We're gonna do the exact same thing for our grabbable cube. In this case, it's a static mesh. And we're gonna set collision preset to VR interactable. So if you're creating a blueprint from scratch, you add a static mesh or a skeletal mesh, and then you add the grab component below it, you will need to change this, the collision, collision preset for that skeletal mesh or static mesh to stop this from happening. So from there, we can jump back in. So if we tested it now, we'd see that our player still collides with our objects. The reason for that is the grab component actually changes them back for us. So if we open up the grab component, if we take a look in this section here, you can see in the event graph, we have cast a primitive component and this fires on begin play. So as soon as we start, it actually changes our collision profile back to physics actor. So what we want to do is actually put this as VR interactable. You need to make sure that this is 100% spelt correctly. If not, it won't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my collision channel, select VR interactable and just copy this value and paste it into here. So now if we hit compile and we were to test it, we wouldn't be able to grab our objects. And the reason for that in our VR pawn, we open this up. By default, our function for get grab component near motion controller actually uses a physics body. And in this case, we need to change that to VR interactable. So we hit uh, compile now. We press play and jump in. 
we should now be able to actually walk up to our objects. My right controller just died, which is bad timing because I wanted to jump. But we should be able to pick up our objects, move around without our capsule pulling and pushing our player around the map. If we try to fire our gun, it won't work. So we'll take a look at that next. But we can pick stuff up and move around. And we could also jump if my controller didn't die. So the last thing I want to cover is the projectiles from the pistols and maybe the, the how skinny the player is, let's put it that way. So if we open up the projectile, what you want to do is set sphere, sphere Collision. And in the Collision Object type, it's already set to Collision Preset Custom. So we just need to change VR Interactable to Overlap. That will allow our projectiles to spawn. And then the last thing I want to do is in our VR Pawn, I want to show you that the capsule component can have its width changed. So let's say you're moving closer towards the table or the object and you want to be a little bit closer to it rather than being quite far away when a player stops. You can change this down to around 15 for the capsule radius. And then when, when we jump in now, what we'll do is we'll actually be able to play around by moving with the left controller, jump with our A button on the right controller, snap, turn, sprint, so we can run around real fast and then actually pick up our weapons objects and fire those as they were previously and they were like cubes so that is pretty much it i know this was a quite a long tutorial but there was quite a lot to cover with it but hopefully this can give you a starting point to work from when setting up your own projects and to go from there and um, this is actually probably the main groundwork that i did for the gdxr vr template so everything's built on this kind of framework. So if you want to save some time, check out the Patreon for a download link to this project. And it'll contain all the code. We crashed again. I had no luck with it today. And then, um, yeah, check out the marketplace for the GTXR template. Might save you some time, depending on what you're trying to do. But overall, big shout out to Carissia for sorting out the tutorial. Uh, basically coming up with the code in the first place and letting me build a tutorial from it. Um, and finally, a big shout out to Patreon for helping me support this and do this a lot more, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.